All right, using lessons learned, can you create this uh, profile? Notice in the tree I called this extrude and revolve. It's lessons learned from this extrude and this revolution. Can you build this part? Go ahead and give that a shot. I'm going to go ahead and demo it right now. So if you need to pause the video and try it, go ahead and try it. Otherwise, I'll I'll do this from scratch here. I'll hide this and create a new geometrical set. And rename it. And then what you do is go to surface and do an extrude. Take this profile. First thing it asks for is a sketch. And then we'll make it eight inches long. It's like, okay. I'll then go to Revolve, select this curve, that spline, and revolve it around the H axis or the Y. Maybe hard to grab, so remember I suggested you can right click here, wireframe, and choose the Y. And you have to key in whatever angles it takes to make it look like this. Now, what's cool about this is I can actually go back to extrude and click on this edge. Make sure you grab just the edge and it'll extrude that. It will come up with a warning letting you know if you change anything that this is going to change, but I probably want that anyways. Okay, now the tricky one here is I got no axis to work from. So when I do the revolve, and click on this edge. It wants me to grab an axis. I need an axis right down the center here to revolve around, but I don't have that to choose from. So I'm gonna show you a trick called the common tools. If I right click here in this field and go to wireframe, I can create a line on the fly. So that technique is using a common tool. I will create that on the fly and select create line, and I'm gonna go point direction. The point is going to be from the center of the axis, eight inches over in the X direction. So I want to create a point on the fly to work from. So I use a right click, insert, and create a point. And I'd already done this, so it's eight inches over here in the X direction and zero X, Y. That gives me a startup point right in the center of this. Select OK. And the direction I want to go, again, is in the Y direction. So I'm just going to use my contextual menu and go to the Y direction. And it defaulted to the last thing I did, which was 10 inches long. So it really doesn't matter. It's just going to be an axis of revolution. So I'll select OK. All right, it's going the wrong way, so i got to change my values around accordingly. Now, unfortunately, i got to, if I just try and change this to 0 and this to 180, as soon as I hit 0, it's going to say, hey, man, I, I can't do it. So it's okay. As soon as I change this to 180 up here, I'll just add 18 in front and hit apply. I get my full revolution. All right. Now, the reason why we create these types of surfaces is, that might be difficult to make that shape of a solid, but if I just quickly rip that out, I can then go back to part design. And in the part design environment, there's a feature called closed surfaces. So if I click this one, it's telling me you forgot to change the part by to be the in work object. So let me cancel this. Right click on the part body and make it the in work object because I now want to work with the solid. Again, I'll use this closed feature found in the model tab. If I grab this solid or surface and select OK, it's going to say, man, I don't know what to do with this. All right, so I'm going to cancel that. 
And what I'm going to do here is go back to generative wireframe and surfacing workbench application. Under transform, I can join all my surfaces. So when I hit join, I'm joining all these surfaces to make them one surface. And we always want to change this to federate all. And what I'll do is just kind of recognize it all as one piece. When I'm putting my cursor on it, I'll select OK. And then I will go to the part design workbench. Make the part body the in work object. And I'll go to close. It looks like I'm grabbing that same surface, but I'm not. I'm actually grabbing the join that represents all four surfaces as one piece. When I select OK to that, and click off in No Man's Land, if I hide this geometrical set, this is the actual solid piece now. So that's one solid part. Okay? So what you have here is four surfaces. I'll hide the part body. Unhide the geometrical set. These four surfaces go into hide because it's all represented by this one join. So this join doesn't make these go away. It's just one piece representing all four. For this example, this join would be known as the MDS. That's the master dimension surface. And these would be known as the OMLs. They're the outside part. Okay. So that's the OML surfaces, the outside of this part. If I were to go back and hide this geometrical set and hide this, unhide the part body, I could go to the shell feature and select this part and change the inside thickness to point one two five preview that can't really tell so I'll say okay and look at it all right so see how that's closed off if I wanted it to be open I could just open the part body and double click the shell and if I go back and click on the back side and hit OK You can now see through this part. All right, so what I'm going to do here is on the shell, I'm going to right click and go to properties. Change the graphic color. I'll pick a random color like salmon. Hit apply. Say, okay, I won't be able to see my, well, I guess I can. So the inside color that's the salmon color is known as the IML. And the outside in the gray is known as the OML. The join that represents all of it is the MDS, the master dimension surface. The IML is the inside mold line, inside mold line, and the outside mold line is the gray. Notice that when I double click the shell, it tells you outside and inside. Inside thickness is 125, so it went from the outside and I went in an eighth of an inch. Outside is at zero. This is the outside right here. Whoops. Okay, so you need to define IML, OML, MDS, and hopefully that helps you understand the difference between OMLs and MDS services, and the IML represents the inside. All right. Let's see if you can make that part.